I'm going to be showing you how to properly change your power supply so you can game without interruptions. To help me out with this project, Be Quiet sent over their 1000 watt straight power 12 modular PSU. It has an 80 plus platinum efficiency rating and it also has a 10 year warranty and that's how you know a company stands behind their product when they're standing by it for 10 years. You can find out more information on this power supply in the description below and at the end of the video. So this is all you need to change a power supply and that is just a Phillips head screwdriver. This one's actually a, uh, yeah, it's a be quiet one so it's quite fitting, but that's all you need necessity wise, but I do recommend using cable ties as well. This power supply did come with a few and it's also got the power supply screws as well, but if you're upgrading, you've already got them in your PC anyway. So that's all you need. So once your PC is fully powered off and you've held down the power button to make sure all the capacitors are drained, it is time to take out all of the cables. So your GPU cables here, your motherboard cable there, and then your CPU power up here and any other auxiliary power you've got maybe to a SATA controller or SATA SSDs or SATA hard drives they will also need to come out as well. Also, while you're at it, you may as well give your PC a bit of a clean out just to prevent maintenance because my PC, as you could probably tell already, is not a, it's not very clean. It hasn't been clean since about May time. So yeah, definitely give your PC a clean. You may as well. As you can probably see, the 24 pin is probably one of the hardest cables to remove ever. Remember when I said that the motherboard connector was the hardest one to remove? I kind of lied because that is the 12 volt EPS pins for the CPU, so yeah. Once you've unplugged everything on the motherboard side of the PC, it's time to flip it around and then look at the back of it. So here we've got stuff like SATA power connectors going into hard drives and into fan controllers like this. It may vary depending on your configuration, but we need to unplug these as well to make sure we can get the power supply out after this. So once everything's unplugged, it's time to uncable manage the current cable. So make sure there's no zip ties tying anything down or any Velcro straps like these ones, just to make sure when you pull out the power supply, nothing gets ripped out or anything like that. It doesn't get snagged on anything because you don't want that. All of the power connectors out their respective places now, they're not cable managed anymore. It's safe to take the power supply out. Just be careful when you're taking it out. You don't want to accidentally tear anything out of its socket or anything like that. It's very hard for that to happen, but you don't want to take any risks with stuff like this. So it's now time to get the power supply out. So all we need to do to take this one out are there are four sort of screws. On this NZXT H700, which is my case, it's got one of these sliding mechanisms where the power supply slides out like this. A lot going through the side. Just check with your case to see how it actually comes out. And if you just fish the cables through like that, you should be good to go. So that's how you pull out a PC power supply. And that's half of the job done. Now on to installing the power supply in here. Depending on your case design, you might have a power supply bracket which mounts the back of your power supply. My NZXT H700 does, and I know this is very popular with some case manufacturers, but not all cases come with this power supply bracket. A big disclaimer, if you're moving from one modular power supply to the other, and that is don't reuse the cables unless if you absolutely know they are compatible with the other power supply. In this case, I'm moving actual brands, so they're definitely not going to be compatible. So I'm going to be using the new cables which come from my new power supply. So that's one thing you should definitely look out for. Don't reuse your cables unless if you absolutely know they are compatible with your new power supply, which in this case, they aren't. Another step for modular users, if you've got a fixed power supply, this won't concern you. But the benefit of having a modular power supply is you only have to use the cables that you absolutely need. So the cables that I will need is two 12 volt EPS pins for the CPU, a 24 pin motherboard connector, and two PCIe power connectors for my RTX 3080. And then lastly, I need one SATA connector for the fan hubs and stuff like that in my case. So another thing to note with modular power supplies is they are unidirectional. So this is the side of the 24 pin that will go into the motherboard. 
this will go into the back of the power supply as you can see they are key different so this is ATX main connector and this one obviously isn't a 24 pin because it's got an extra four there instead of an extra two like normal 24 pins so that's one thing to keep in mind So all of my necessary power connectors are in, just make sure you've got the right ones for you and make sure they are firmly in place as well. So you should feel a firm click. As soon as you feel that, the power connectors are in just fine. So it's ready to put in there. And there we go, the new power supply is in and all we've got to do now is just manage these cables and hook them up in the right place, which is probably one of the harder parts of changing a power supply because it just takes so long. But other than that, as soon as that's done, the PC is ready to go. Right, this is never the easiest task of PC building. It's probably one of the harder ones actually. So let's get the CPU cables sorted first as they're usually some of the hardest to sort out. There you go, so if we put the CPU cables off to one side and manage them properly, like that. So CPU cables can go that way for now. Then that brings us on to the main motherboard connector. Just put it through this hole for now. And then we can cable manage this one in a bit. And then the two GPU cables. start off with these GPU cables. Now it's time for one of the most stubborn cables which is the motherboard cable. And you should always watch out for which side the actual clip's on and on this motherboard it's on the inside. Last but not least, don't forget to hook up any SATA drives that you've got because yeah, you, you don't want to not be booting into Windows or you don't want to be missing your data. So there we go then, everything's all hooked up in the right place, so we've got our EPS pins up there for the CPU, we've got our 24 pin motherboard connector up there which was a bit of a pain to put in, same goes for these as well, and we've got our GPU cables down here which were probably the easiest of the bunch, and then we've got the SATAs on the back, so everything's hooked up now. Another mistake that you could do while changing your power supply is leaving it off and you might think that there's something wrong with it, just flick it up onto on, I means on, so yeah. Now it's for the moment of truth. And there we go, we get a display out. Well, it looks that way at least. And there we go, we've got a display out. And everything's looking all good in my PC. So, that's how you change a power supply. To be fair, it's probably one of the harder things you can do with a PC just because of the amount of stuff you've got to do. And you've got to make sure everything's plugged in correctly and it's in the right place as well and especially with the EPS connector, it's really hard to get in once you've already built the system and yeah, it's not very fun. So now you've installed your power supply, it's probably best to test it to make sure it's fully working. So stress test your CPU, stress test your GPU, or maybe both of them at the same time to make sure that your power supply is working totally fine in your system. Before I round off this video, I want to say a massive thank you to Be Quiet for sending out their Straight Power 12 power supply. 
This thing is an absolute monster with 1000 watts of continuous power on the 12 volt rail, which is absolutely insane. And it can deliver over 83 amps on that 12 volt rail as well. It's also backed by a 10 year warranty as well. So this means that Be Quiet's got a lot of faith in this product and it shouldn't be failing you anytime soon. Also as the Straight Power 12 is an ATX 3.0 power supply with PCIe 5.0 capabilities, it does have the 12 volt high power PCIe power connector as standard as well. So if you've got a 40 series Nvidia graphics card, you won't need to use any of them ugly adapters as it's built straight into the power supply. And lastly, as electricity in most parts of the world right now isn't exactly cheap, this thing has an 80 plus platinum rating, which is one above gold. So essentially it's very efficient. So if you want to check out the Straight Power 12 or any other of Be Quiet's products, make sure you check them out linked in the description below. So with that being said, I'm going to leave this video here. There are two other tech videos right up here, which might be right up your alley. And if you got this far into the video, I would like to say thank you for sticking around this long and maybe even leave a like if you enjoyed the video. With that being said, I'm going to leave this one here and I hope you found this one helpful and I'll catch you in the next one.